In this tutorial, we're going to recreate this fireball route animation using Google Earth Studio and Blender. We'll be utilizing the Earth Studio Tools add-on to stylize our routes, create KML masking, and use the Marker Maker tool to create our place markers. Finally, we'll composite it all in After Effects. So without further ado, let's get started. We'll start by creating a new project in Google Earth Studio. We're going to name this one Coronation. We're going to set our duration for this video at uh, 245 to start off with. For this project, we're going to be using a KML file to get started. So we're going to switch back over to uh, Google Earth Pro and uh, have a look at a couple KMLs that I've recreated. These would be simulated uh, Coronation procession routes for the upcoming King Charles III procession and coronation. See the green one here, this is uh, Queen Elizabeth's coronation. Uh, the red is shared with both, and then the blue is a proposed uh, coronation route for King Charles III. So I'm going to save these uh, KML files, and uh, you'll excuse the fact that uh, I misspelled Abbey. Uh, I do correct it later. Uh, we'll switch back over into Google Earth Studio and now load up the KML uh, routes uh, that I have saved in Google Earth Studio, or rather in Google Earth Pro. So I'll load the first one and then the uh, second one also. And then by uh, double clicking on the uh, KML, uh, it will take us to the location in London. So the uh, red route represents uh, leaving Buckingham Palace and going to Westminster Abbey. So we're going to set a uh, track point right at the beginning point of that route. And we'll call this one Start Buckingham Palace. Uh, we do need a uh, track point at uh, the beginning of each route so that we can match them up in uh, Blender. So now we'll take a look at the blue route and add a track point at the beginning of that one. And we'll call this one incorrectly start Abbey. And now we need to provide uh, some track point breadcrumbs for uh, Blender so that it maintains the proper altitude throughout the uh, route generation. Uh, this is by uh, selecting areas where we know there may be points uh, on the KML data. Um, so I usually select corners or curves, knowing that there are some points that will be able to uh, detect both the altitude and the position of the uh, KML file. So I'll go through each of these routes and add uh, additional track points. They don't need to be named. Uh, again, these are just used as breadcrumbs to upload the uh, KML data into Blender. I'd previously set a uh, keyframe on frame zero, as you can see there. And this is a overhead view showing the entire uh, route. Uh, this is going to give us the ability to just use a few frames uh, within Blender to get started uh, as we go through the next few steps. So for rendering, we're going to do an image sequence uh, frames zero to five, and we'll just use a HD uh, uh, resolution or dimensions, and again, uh, JSON tracking as well. So we'll click on the uh, Start button there and uh, send this off to be rendered. So since it's only six frames that needed to be rendered, uh, it's uh, very quick. So we'll jump into Blender now, and we'll import the uh, uh, Google Earth Studio data. So again, using Earth Studio tools, we'll jump to the Earth Studio tab and uh, select our footage. So we'll select the folder and then the uh, first item. Uh, then the associated JSON file. And then we'll click on Import Earth Studio. Uh, so again, we're only getting uh, five frames of the animation here. We're going to overwrite this in the future so that we get the full animation. But to get started, we're going to use these five frames to create our mask KML. So to make things a little bit easier to see, I'm just going to remove our relationship lines there from the option menu. And uh, what we need to do is we need to now import the original KML file 
um, using Earth Studio tools. So we use import KML route. Uh, we'll select the original uh, KML file. And it's going to use the track points that we had uh, imported in from Google Earth Studio to maintain the altitude throughout the scene. So we need to select our snap to, which is the starting point for the KML file. We're going to select our curve as NURBS. We're going to set our bevel depth to 0 0.08. And this should be a sufficient size for us to create the, the proper animation we're looking for. We're then going to select our JSON file that was uh, attached with our Google Earth Studio render. We'll then set our uh, point reduction to zero, uh, given that uh, the KML was handmade, so there aren't any unnecessary points, and our match proximity to one meter. This is uh, how close uh, the KML route is to one of the track points. Uh, so we'll import the KML route, and you can see it there. And in the GES path, we can see the route path. Uh, we're going to add a color to it. So we'll create this material. This is just so it stands out a little bit better in uh, Blender for us at this stage. Because we'll be able to re-import this KML uh, route back into Google Earth Studio to create a route path, uh, we can make modifications to the actual shape and uh, curvature of the path itself. So with this one here, we're uh, selecting the path and uh, we're increasing the resolution of the active spline. So uh, in this particular case, we'll set our order U to four and uh, we'll make sure that we have the uh, endpoint U selected. You can see the uh, original path itself is the line. We can uh, make adjustments and uh, subdivide sections of the line itself, uh, the Bezier curve. This allows for adding some additional geometry in the actual path itself. This particular curve will be exported as a KML file and will replace our original KML file. Uh, it will create the mask within Google Earth Studio, but will also be our uh, foundation curve that we'll be using within uh, Blender to animate the uh, route progression. So we'll load up the uh, second uh, KML file and perform the same modifications. So once we're happy with the modifications, uh, we're going to export this now uh, in a format that we can load back into Google Earth Studio. So we're going to select the export object as KML. We'll give it a fill color, and I'm going to give it uh, this uh, magenta. Uh, we won't be using the line color because our line is set to zero. Uh, we're going to select our destination folder. So this, uh, by default, uh, will go to your where you've saved your Blender project. If you haven't saved your Blender project, you can select a folder. We'll then give it a file name um, that will distinguish it within Google Earth Studio. So we'll call this one uh, Blender to Abbey, and we'll export as KML. We'll then select the uh, second uh, KML file, and we'll call this one Blender from Abbey and we'll export that KML file. Then switching back over to Google Earth Studio, we can now uh, load these KML files. Uh, we'll uh, disable the uh, previous ones, and then we'll go File, Import, Overlay KML. We'll select the uh, two KML files that we created. And you can see there it's a magenta colored uh, uh, tube that we'll be using to mask our, creating a mask for our route. Uh, let's load the uh, second one up as well. While you could use these uh, KML files directly within uh, Google Earth Studio and render a final project, uh, we're going to be using it as a mask so that uh, we can interact with 3D objects. Uh, and create our own route with visual effects within Blender. On occasion, the uh, data that is being uh, put into uh, Google Earth Studio uh, exceeds its uh, normal capabilities, uh, and you do get page crashes. So what we're going to do is we're going to try and reduce the amount of data that is being loaded into uh, into Google Earth Studio by reducing the number of points within our KML file 
as you can see here, we had a bit of a crash, which means we uh, need to start up our project again. So we'll go, let's uh, jump over into Blender and uh, fix these KML paths or reduce the number of points on them. So jumping back over to Blender, um, we're going to select the individual route path uh, and then the uh, Bezier tab. Uh, we'll reduce our resolution U um, and we'll set it over into uh, wireframe mode so we can see that uh, the number of points that we're adjusting the U value, uh, resolution U value, will adjust the geometry of the route itself. So we'll set our bevel at two and our active spline resolution at four, and then we'll export uh, a new version of the file. We'll then select the other spline and perform the same procedure. Then switching back over to Google Earth Studio, we'll re-import the new files. While we've corrected some of the resolution issues, uh, it still is quite a sizable uh, workload for Google Earth Studio. So once we've loaded them up, um, we're going to hide them as we build our animation. So I'm using a, a camera target here and uh, the positioning of the camera itself uh, on keyframes. Uh, I'll then go back and adjust the curves using the map view uh, as we progress throughout the route. Uh, it takes about uh, 15, 20 minutes to, to get this process done, but I've sped it up here for you. And so once I've uh, done my basic uh, cameras, I'll uh, go through and check the curves and uh, give it a couple playbacks to make sure I'm happy with the animation. Once I'm satisfied that uh, it's going to work, I will set it to render with the mask. So once that's finished rendering, we want to now make a version without the mask. So we'll go to Show Overlay Panel, and we will disable all of the KML objects. We'll then click on the uh, Render button, and we'll create a version without the mask. Now that we've got our two primary renders done, we can go back into uh, Blender and uh, reload the project now with all of the data. So we'll uh, go into our clean uh, rendering and we'll select the images there. This is the one without the mask. And then we'll select uh, the associated uh, JSON file to that render. Um, and we will import Earth Studio. Now you can have multiple versions of imports. Uh, it will keep a uh, version of the previous uh, track points that you loaded in there. Uh, and you can see that it renamed our previous version with a .001. Uh, it will, however, move the camera from our original uh, to the uh, new GES world that we created. Um, so we can see here that it's uh, loaded up and it has uh, now all the animations that we performed within Google Earth Studio. So we'll go into that copy and uh, we can just go ahead and delete uh, all of the uh, track points that are in there. We could just delete the entire hierarchy. So we do have just the one version. Uh, otherwise, we would have duplicate track points throughout. So now we can uh, go back to our route paths and um, prepare them for the reveal. Um, first thing we want to do is uh, make sure that uh, the route paths have the resolution set back to where we had them before. So again, using the, uh, the curve options, um, we're going to change our depth for the route path. Uh, and then also the uh, resolution U we can put at 12, which is going to give us a very smooth rounded corners. As you can see here, if we keep it at four, it uh, gets a little bit chunky. You also notice that we uh, changed the depth from 0.08 to 0 0.02 for our first path there. Um, this is going to be a uh, double tube to produce our visual effect. Uh, so this is the inner tube at uh, 0 0.02. Uh, we will then perform the reveal on each of the uh, route paths and then duplicate uh, to create an outer tube which will produce our glowing effect. 
So we're going to start by uh, setting the uh, end mapping on our first route to zero. Uh, let's just clean up things here. We're going to create a new collection and uh, then move our markers uh, off of the uh, main collection into the ground markers collection. We'll uh, hide that so that we uh, don't see those markers as we uh, continue working here. So back to the uh, end and uh, start and end mapping. Uh, for our start, we will set uh, at zero. And then as the uh, Googler Studio animation exposes the various sections, we'll move the uh, endpoint up and uh, create a new keyframe. And you can see how it uh, adjusts uh, based on the frames that we're on. And you can make little fine, uh, you can fine tune and tweak it uh, in between the, the various keyframes as well. And so we'll finish uh, this route off here at uh, Westminster Abbey and uh, set our keyframe end to zero there. So if we're happy with uh, how that animates, uh, we can now add our outer tube, which will give us a little bit more of the uh, glowing effect. So we select our, our object, uh, our initial inner tube object. Uh, let's create a new material for it. And uh, we'll go with a blue material, remove our initial one there. We'll make uh, this uh, glossy and um, by adjusting our specularity and our roughness. And we're also gonna give this an emission, uh, a blue emission. This will uh, come into play when we start working with the Bloom capabilities uh, within Blender using Eevee. We also gave this a little bit of uh, alpha or transparency and then uh, changed the blend mode to an alpha blend. And uh, you'll notice there the uh, adjustments on the show back face and uh, back face uh, culling as well that uh, can change the effect that we're looking for. Uh, so the next thing we're going to do is going to make a duplicate of the exact same route path, but we're going to change the uh, depth to 0.4 uh, so that it encases the original smaller route path. Uh, we're then going to make some adjustments to the uh, material on this item so it becomes a little bit more transparent so that we can see uh, with inside. So we'll do a test render there and see how that looks. Um, we'll change our emission strength and our alpha. We want it to be basically like a, a glass tube. And uh, as I was doing that, I was working off of the raw material. So, and so that looks pretty good. Uh, the next thing we want to do is put a, uh, a light source at uh, the uh, beginning of the route that will uh, travel with the route to provide the fireball effect. So we're going to start by actually uh, creating a uh, light source. Um, just checking our ground markers there. We want it to start at the beginning. So we'll uh, select light and then a point light. Uh, we're going to set the uh, power of this light to 1000. Um, then we want to attach it to the route itself. So we'll select the uh, point and then go to the add constraints and we'll set it to follow path. We'll select the route path that we want it to follow, and we'll select uh, follow curve. We'll then go back to the route path, uh, and then in the uh, path animation section, we're going to set our frames to one. This will just give us the same ratio as we're using for our reveal. So we're going to copy the endpoint as a new driver, and then we're going to paste the driver in this section. This will link the two values and allow for the light now to follow the very beginning of our route path. Uh, you can use the same technique if you wanted to put like an automobile or an arrow at the front of a uh, route path. We're going to turn our bloom on um, and uh, we'll make a couple adjustments to the values here. Uh, and of course, I'm not seeing them change because I'm not in rendered mode. So we'll switch to rendered mode. And you can see that uh, the, the bloom effect there. Now, in doing so, we have to go to the film and set the film to transparent. This way we can uh, see our background again. And you can see it gives you a nice glowing effect uh, at the beginning of the route path. 
Now, what you see on the screen is not exactly what you're going to get in the uh, rendered version. Um, there are a few adjustments that we'll make, uh, obviously, along the way, as well as the uh, masking technique. Um, but for the meantime, that's going to give us a good representation of uh, the appearance. Uh, so let's go now to the uh, other route, and we're going to perform uh, the exact same procedures that we performed on the first route, uh, creating the uh, start and end mapping. Uh, creating a duplicate, and then also applying the light. So that's looking pretty good. I like the uh, red one uh, especially. It uh, came out nicely. Next thing we need to do is the uh, place markers. So we're going to go back to uh, Google Earth Studio, and we're going to extract uh, some points of interest uh, that we want to put in here. So we're going to switch over to the track points panel, and uh, we're going to uh, first of all, make a save on this one in case we uh, screw up here. So we'll save a copy, but uh, we're going to select the track points that we don't need. So I selected uh, from the second item all the way down to the bottom. You can hold shift uh, and then you can delete them uh, from Google or St Studio by right mouse clicking and selecting delete. Uh, so we're left with just the first one, which is uh, Buckingham Palace. Um, but we're going to add uh, some new ones in here. It's always important to keep your first track point that uh, you used in any of the projects. Uh, you can delete pretty much anything else but uh, the first one as it is your anchor track point. So we will keep that one here. Uh, so we'll also add a track point here now on top of uh, Westminster Abbey. Um, keep in mind the uh, marker maker tool will use the exact uh, text from Google Earth Studio to create your markers. So this is where you want to make sure that you put in the uh, the correct wording. So you can see there I uh, added uh, a few uh, points of interest uh, and we'll just leave that there for a moment and we'll head back to Google or back to Blender rather uh, and we're going to create a template for our markers. Uh, so first thing we want to do is create uh, a circle object uh, and then we will use that object to create our markers themselves. Uh, so we'll select circle from the add menu and it's just going to place it on the uh, uh, 3D surface. Um, you can see it in the orange selected mode there. I'm going to tab in on it and then uh, select uh, F to fill. Uh, I'm then going to select the right side objects. We'll zoom back out and we're just going to move them off to the right. If you watch the uh, marker maker video, um, this is a very similar uh, marker that we're making here. So we're just going to pull the curves off of the right side of the circle, join them in the middle and uh, produce a little arrow that points down. So once that looks good, we'll uh, tap back out and uh, get into our camera view. Uh, you can see we've got a bit of a glow on that uh, item there. So we'll uh, adjust our material. Uh, then we'll want to add a uh, text element. This will be able to carry the text from the uh, track points uh, and display it over top of the marker. And we're just going to select a font here and format our text. Uh, and again, if you want a little bit more in depth on the marker maker, there is a video available uh, for that particular um, feature. Uh, so once I get the text uh, lined up on our marker, uh, we can go back into our camera view and then we just need to organize these items. But we'll uh, just uh, switch the colors around a little bit. It looks a bit better. There we go, back in the camera view. And uh, we're going to create now an empty. This will be our parent object. So we are going to move the circle and the uh, text item into the uh, template parent uh, or empty object. Uh, we can then move the items uh, and position them correctly within uh, the empty as well. And so what I'm doing here is uh, I made a duplicate also of that, uh, that same template. Um, and I'm going to be creating a two line version of it. So I made a copy and hit the uh, first one uh, and then uh, modified the size of the second one. And then I'm just going to adjust the text um, line spacing so that we can have a two line version. Uh, this would be for longer names like Buckingham Palace or Westminster Abbey. It allows us to use a secondary 
version. So we're going to move these into their own collection. Uh, that just gives us a, the ability to hide them, um, but yet still make them accessible to the marker maker. So we're going to load up the uh, new uh, JSON file, but we have to actually export it first from Google Earth Studio. So we're just going to give this a bit of a different name, export the, the JSON file, and we'll call this one uh, marker, which I'm overwriting there. Uh, and then back into uh, Blender, we're going to select our new marker JSON file. Um, obviously, our uh, image sequence is the same again. So we're going to have a look at our uh, track point marker tool. Uh, and we have a couple templates that now are accessible. So uh, we want to be able to uh, interact with that uh, new marker JSON file. So we'll import uh, Earth Studio again. Um, this will, uh, like before, we'll create a previous version and a current version. The uh, GES World uh, 01 uh, is the older version. And then the uh, GES uh, world is the current one that we just loaded up. And as you can see in here, we have all of our track points. Um, so what we can do with the uh, marker maker is we can hide elements, uh, making them invisible or not visible um, within the uh, workspace. Uh, and this will disable the marker maker um, from creating markers for the hidden ones. So we're going to just going to do the uh, the two um, primary markers, which is uh, Buckingham Palace and uh, Westminster Abbey, and everything else is hidden. And it will create those two markers based on our template two, which is our two line uh, template. And you can see that uh, we're just putting the uh, carriage return in there to uh, push the second word to the second line. And you'll also notice there when uh, we created the uh, markers, we had the uh, face to camera option. Uh, this will make it so that the uh, route marker will always face the camera. Now quickly uh, edit the list of place markers and uh, make visible the markers that I want to create for single line markers. Um, you'll also notice they're a slightly different color uh, and I'll use template one there. And you'll see one pops up there for Hyde Park uh, and so forth. Now, the markers will be uh, created in their own uh, collection called GES markers. Uh, and also, when you edit one of the markers that's within the template and it's sharing the same material, any adjustments that you make uh, to one will automatically be uh, replicated through all the other markers. So, for example, here we added a emission value for one of the uh, background colors. So all related templates uh, or all re related markers from the same template will share that material. If you come across a marker where the text doesn't fit exactly, you can go and resize the uh, text element on the marker itself. Um, this is something that is not shared amongst the individual markers. So any sizing adjustments that you make are specific to that particular marker. Now to clean things up, we're going to uh, create a uh, new collection and we'll be moving all of the markers that we created uh, uh, in our latest JSON file into this collection uh, so as we can hide them from display. So these are the actual um, planes that uh, indicate the marker position and not the actual markers themselves, which are in their own collection called GES markers. And lastly, we want to uh, set our uh, start and end brightness for the lights that are at the front of the actual routes. So we'll uh, turn off, obviously, the uh, light that's attached to route two until it becomes visible and uh, give the uh, route one a start and end brightness as well. And then we can move on to rendering. So one of the challenges that we have with rendering with Eevee is that it actually, even though it appears on the screen, it does not render the bloom layer with the original render. So to allow us to see the bloom, we're actually going to separate it 
from the uh, original rendering. So we're going to use the uh, camera or uh, layer options and we're going to select the bloom option there. Then jumping over to the compositing tab, we're going to make sure we have the use nodes option selected. And this is what a normal uh, render would look like taking the image. If we uh, now use the bloom call option and just view that, you can see that it renders the bloom into its own layer. So to uh, kill two birds with one stone, we're going to do a double render. Uh, this requires creating an output and then a file output. We'll then use the bloom node and connect it to the image of our file output and the image node connects to the composite. We'll then want to select the location for our bloom. And we'll call this one route glow and then give it a uh, prefix as well. Um, so with that set, it will actually now render both the original pass in addition to the bloom pass all at once. Once those renders are finished, I'm going to add one more visual element, which are street signs. So I've created some uh, images for the street signs. I'm going to select the origin close to where I want to put the street sign on top of one of our track points so that we're at ground level. I'll then select the image and I'm loading images as planes. I can then position the street sign where I would like it uh, and uh, adjust its size. Once I've added all the street signs and I'm ready to uh, render my sign layer, I'll do a couple uh, test renders and then identify which elements I don't want included in this and then deselect them from the rendering by turning off the camera icon. And so once I'm satisfied with the items that I've selected, I'll uh, go back to my compositing and remove the bloom layer, uh, select a folder on uh, my system and give it a prefix and render again now just the sign layer with our markers and signs. So I went back and uh, changed one of the templates uh, for one of the markers there. Uh, just looks a little bit nicer. So I re-rendered that, but uh, now we're ready to composite uh, all of our assets. So uh, opening up After Effects, I'm going to start with a new project. And in the uh, project pane, we're going to uh, import a file. We'll uh, start by importing the original uh, Googler Studio files. Uh, so we're going to select the uh, clean footage. So this is the one without the mask. And then we'll also import the uh, masked footage. We'll then uh, drag the uh, clean footage down to our workspace area. Uh, and we're going to be creating our mask layer. So we'll, we'll drag our uh, mask footage as well. Selecting the uh, clean footage, we're going to look for the uh, difference mat and we'll drag that onto our clean footage. Then from the source, we're going to select our mask layer. And then we're going to set our tolerance to uh, 5% and our matching softness to 1%. So when I hide the mask layer, you can see how it is masking the route that we had in place there. So make some uh, small adjustments here to find the uh, right look. Um, not too concerned about the uh, small dots there. Uh, but once I'm happy with it, I'll uh, pre-compose it and uh, give it a name of mask. Now we can start putting in some of our other assets. So we'll import file. And we're going to load our route. We'll drag that underneath the mask layer and then select the uh, track mat to alpha. Now, as I scrub a little bit further along here, we should see it starting to expose just the elements that are contained within the mask layer. Once I drop the clean footage underneath of it, you can see that the masking works over top of the Google Earth Studio imagery. Yet when entering buildings and such and under trees, uh, it will be hidden appropriately. 
Next, let's uh, import our uh, glow layer or our bloom layer. Uh, now this is going to have to use the same masking. So we're going to throw it right on top, uh, over top of the mask layer, and we're going to use the add mode. The add mode will disregard any of the black elements within the image and only show brighter elements. We're going to select the mask layer now and make a duplicate with control D. We'll move that copy above the bloom image and again setting the bloom image to alpha mode. To fix the pixelation in the key, we're going to use a simple choker. This will expand the size of the key. We'll set this to 10, or rather negative 10, so it expands. So it looks a little bit soft, so we're going to use the key cleaner, which will allow us to transition a little bit nicer between the key and the background image. So I'll play around with uh, the settings a little bit on uh, some of these treed areas. I wanted to have a little bit of a glow through, but uh, not look like an obvious mask on it. So that looks pretty good there. So now let's load up our signs and we'll drag that to the top layer. This doesn't need a mask because uh, all the signs do not fall behind buildings or trees. And then lastly, we want to be able to get the uh, best quality image out of Google Earth Studio. So in addition to the project renders, I also rendered a 4K version using the cloud rendering option. I also added some time of day to give a little bit better light. And uh, I can load the 4K MP4 into the project and then drag it down to the bottom layer just above our project clean file there. Now, this is a 4K version, so we will need to reduce the size by 50% to fit the project dimensions. While the project is an HD project for our final output, the 4K version will provide more detail in the imagery, as you can see here. And that's it. We're ready to render, and this is the final product. A few years ago, I created the Earth Studio Tools add-on for the Google Earth Studio and Blender community, and I've been updating it with features and bug fixes ever since. As many of you know, I provide the software and support through GitHub and this YouTube channel at no charge. It's been quite an undertaking and has become a significant part of my daily routine. If you would like to contribute, please check out our donate options on GitHub, link in the description below, and make sure to give this video a like and subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you soon.